Hello and welcome to the next UA Compliance Test Tool video. And this one is about automated client testing. So in this video we will take a look at what it is to do automated client testing. We'll do a quick case study of how the OTC Foundation is using this methodology and the benefits we're re re receiving. Then we'll take a look at the command line interface and, and return codes. We'll take a demo of the CTT unit testing and automated testing in action. And then we'll talk about documentation and integration within a CI. So because the CTT has command line arguments, you can automate your compliance testing. You want to do this because you want to remove the human from testing. Computers make much better testers than humans do. Computers don't get tired and they work very quickly. And when you incorporate the CTT into your CI for overnight builds, compliance testing then becomes automated. It becomes something you don't think about anymore until you receive an email telling you there's a problem. This will make massive savings on your engineering and QA costs, and it can help avoid problems being introduced into uh, a release. And if you extend the CTT with your own scripts, then you're going to further enhance the amount of testing that's being done in your products, thereby improving the quality, and that cannot be a bad thing, can it? So testing a client automatically is quite different to testing a server. Servers expose an interface, so we can connect to that and very easily do our tests, but clients don't. So it does require that the developer create unit tests that interface with the CTT. So if you're using unit tests within Visual Studio, for example, each of those unit tests will need to integrate with the CTT. So the testing can actually take a while when you do unit testing with a client, but the more scripts you have, the longer it's going to take, but it is very worthwhile. Uh, we strongly encourage all client developers to invest in creating their unit tests, because when you see in our case study, uh, it will pay for itself. So how does this work? So in a unit test, you're going to dynamically open the CTT, load the project, and then specify the test scripts to open and launch. Then you're going to actually do a test from your client, like do a browse, read, or write, or subscribe. And as those calls are routed through the CTT, and your unit test is determining if the behavior is correct or not, when that's done, you then close the CTT. And then you move on to the next unit test. So imagine a scenario where you have read capabilities. Well, there may be 30 or 40 unit tests that you need to run. Each is being tested with a different return code. Perhaps some return codes are using uh, bad return codes or good return codes or well, the operation results have been being manipulated. As you can tell, this, this could be a lengthy process to create these unit tests. But the, the intent is very worthwhile because as developers are working on client source code, they can check in their source code at the end of the day and the build machine can automatically check out the source code, compile it, build it, run it do any unit tests on that actual application. And then with the additional unit tests for compliance te testing, the CTT could do its testing on the application as well. And based on the CTT's test results, the build process may halt because there's some problem, or it might continue and further generate documentation and installers, etc. So the MPC Foundation, when when we release the, the UA deliverables, obviously we have a lot, but the most problematic for us was the UA CTT, particularly the scripts that are used for testing a client, the error injection scripts. Uh, those would take us about three days to manually go through and test each and every one. And that's a long time. Well, we came up with an idea for creating unit tests that would verify that each of those injection scripts actually worked. For example, if I 
use an injection script that says my read failed with a bad um, not supported error, then I can create a unit test that I do a read, and when I get the response, I look for the response to say bad, not supported. So we spent three days creating those unit test scripts, which is the same amount of time it took to actually test those scripts. So once it was all said and done, we could then run our automation script, and it took about 17 to 18 minutes to do every single script, 100% of them versus three days for a person. So with the efficiency gain there is significant. But what we found was as we were developing new scripts, uh, every once in a while we would just kick off a complete regression check simply because we could. Um, and it, it just enables you to find problems so much sooner so you can resolve them while the, the work that you're doing now is fresh in your mind. So again, the savings and efficiency are crucial. The command line interface uh, is shown on screen. There's a lot of options that enable you to fine tune the, the CTT behavior. And the return codes are shown at the bottom. Uh, this information came from the CTT help documentation, which is provided with the CTT. So let's take a look at a demo of how we actually use the CTT in our case study to, to test client scripts. So on the right, we've got the CTT with the injection scripts, and on the left, we've got a CTT that we invented with our unit tests. So for our CTT on the right that contains our injection scripts, let's take a look at an injection script. So we'll take script 15, and this script, what it does is for when a read comes in, it iterates through all of the nodes, and for each data type, it writes the minimum value. So in our unit test on the left, we have a script of the same name, and then we simply invoke the read on line two, and then the other lines are comparing the data type value. And you'll see the other scripts also have matching unit tests. So if we were to run this script, it happens very quickly, but on the right hand side we would see the injection and on the left we can do any logic based on that. But let's go straight to the test. So in this case, we're actually iterating programmatically through the directory structure. So we're looping through each folder and within each subfolder we're looping through each file. Each file is being tested as you see on screen there. So for each file, we dynamically open the CTTs, do the test, close down the CTTs, move on to the next file, and repeat. Now, we're using some time-lapse video here to speed through this testing uh, a lot quicker. Uh, it takes a bit longer than, than what's shown here. But if we look at the task manager, you can see two compliance test tools. One is the CTT that we're testing, and the other one is our unit tester. And the program ID was changing. The badge file contains all of the logic for our unit testing. So down below, we've got a for loop that programmatically iterates through all the directories and subdirectories. And then for each file within those subdirectories, it then calls a function on line 51, which does the actual CTT testing. So in here, uh, we, because we use the same file names in both projects, we're able to launch asynchronously a CTT that acts like the analyzer, and then another CTT with our unit test, and because the file names are the same, we're able to pass in the same parameters. And then when the test is complete, we kill the CTTs, and then there's some other stuff that we do to display the nice friendly message, etc. But again, you can see those CTTs are opening and closing, and opening and closing very rapidly. So you just simply let, there, sit, let that uh, script sit there and run. And at the very end, uh, you'll see it took about 16, 17, maybe 18 minutes to complete, which is a lot quicker than the three days it would have taken for me or any of the other uh, OPC Foundation uh, lab personnel to have conducted manually.
If you need more information about the command line interface or integrating with the CTT, then take a look at the help documentation with the CTT. It's quite extensive. There's a lot of information in there, and it really should be your first point of reference. Jenkins is a very popular CI system. Uh, it's free, it's open source, and it's very extensible. And the CTT can be incorporated directly within it. Uh, the CTT documentation contains step-by-step -step instructions that show you how to integrate with it. And this is really helpful. So those perfect build environments that we described earlier can be accomplished here in Jenkins. So as the CTT does its tests, the results of those tests can be used to further determine what to do with the build process. So you may have checked out the source, compiled it, no compiler errors, done unit tests, no unit test errors, done the compliance test, maybe you got some compliance test failures. Well, you could decide if any fail occurs, then it's a complete failure, abort. Or you might say something like, I expect three test cases to fail for whatever reason. So if three test cases fail, don't consider that a failure. Actually continue with the build. Or you might say, if the number of tests that failed exceeds 5%, then abort the build operation. And the nice thing about these CI systems is the ability to get a notification for when things either go right or go wrong, etc., etc. Other videos of interest may include script development. If you're developing a server or a client, then you really should think about extending the capabilities and testing in the OPC Foundation CTT. The scripts that we provide are very general and apply to all products, but your scripts may be very specific to your product. So adding additional testing in the CTT and incorporating the CTT into your CI will mean that your product automatically receives an even greater level of testing, which is only going to increase the level of uh, testing that's, in, uh, that's, that's, that's conducted, and the overall quality is going to be much better as well. We hope you've appreciated and enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information in here. If you have any questions about any of the content, then please give us a call or email. We're always happy to to help and hear from our members. Thank you.